Hello everyone, we are going to start the new aspect that is Azola, which is used as a biofertilizer. Let us see about the Azola. So, Azola is a tiny little aquatic fern which is found in swamps and bogs that is soft and the wet soil. In this case, we will see what is the Azola. Azola is a branched free floating aquatic fern and naturally available mostly on moist soils, ditches and marshy lands. It is widely distributed in tropical belts of India and it grows in the fresh water. This structure mainly the, we will see the two parts that is the dorsal lobe and the ventral lobe. The dorsal lobe and ventral lobe having the shape of typically triangular and the size is 1.5 to 3 centimeter in length and 1 to 2 centimeter in breadth. You can see here the roots which are emanates from growing branches and remain suspended in water and the dorsal lobe which is exposed to the air. Now you can see here the another species of the azola called as the giant azola and this giant azola is having the length much more that is 15 centimeter and found mainly in central Africa. The earlier one is commonly seen in the India. You will see what are the abilities of the azola. It has the ability to double its biomass in just 2 to 3 days much more faster. It is having the ability to absorb the carbon dioxide from air in great extent and when it dies from the pit layer and decomposing masses at the bottom and become anoxic. And what is the result of this? That will further prevent the future decomposition of the components in the soil due to the deposition of the masses at the bottom. Next one and most important aspect is it can fix the atmospheric nitrogen in the soil in the form of the ammonia and becomes available as the soluble nitrogen for wetland rice crop or what we call the paddy crops. So it has the ability to fix the atmospheric nitrogen. And how it works? The, because it has the specific cavity and these cavities are containing the symbiotic partner, a blue green algae, Anabena azuli. And these are seen, you can see here in the cavities, the presence of the Anabena. And these are able to fix the atmosp atmospheric nitrogen in association with the azola, that is the symbiotic nitrogen fixation process which is become available for the paddy crop. We will come to the what is the chemical nature of this azola, the particularly in the dry wet basis. So you can see these are the various components of the azola. And main is the nitrogen, you can see it is much more that is the 5% and you can see these components which are present in the how to grow it or how to grow the azola or how to cultivate it. There are three methods that is the azola in situ, Azola ex situ and Azola in polythin. Let us see one by one the growth in standing crop with the field that is Azola in situ, growth in an area by accumulating the sufficient water that is Azola in Azola ex situ and Azola in polythene is the most commonly method used nowadays and you can see in the picture. You can see here first one Azola in situ in the field then azola in ex situ and azola in the polythene which we are commonly using this method for its cultivation. Now you can see here the process of the azola cultivation in polythene. It is done step by one. We have to prepare the pit with the suitable length, width with 3 feet or more and depth 1 feet of the pit. In the second step, what we have to do, you have to cover the peat with the polythene and add a mixture of soil and cow dung 
we should have the depth of 2 to 3 inches. In the step 3, fill this pit with the fresh water. And in the step 4, add the azola inoculum in the appropriate quantity. That depends on the size of your pit. You can see here the adding the azola inoculum in the pit. And this is the final result that showing the azola multiplies rapidly and form a green mat like carpet on water surface in just two weeks. Very clearly you can see in this picture. The harvested green azola can be converted into the compost by ponding in pits for the months. Then use like farm yard manure that is the FYM for other crops that can be used. So in general we have mentioned it is used for the paddy crops but FYM that can be also used by the other crops other than the paddy. The green azola is harvested at interval of 15 to 20 days particularly in the summer and while in the winter session the green azola is harvested at the interval of 25 to 30 days. This is was about the harvesting. Now what are the favorable conditions for the higher efficacy of the azola? We will see one by one. The first one is the water which should be 10 to 15 centimeter fresh water in the multiplication pond. Then temperature, a day night temperature ranging between 32 degree centigrade and 20 degree centigrade is most favorable for the growth of azola. Optimum temperature for the luxurious growth is 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. Next one important is the light. Azola grow in well in the partial shade, not directly in the sunlight. It gets partial shade for from the rice plant, hence it is the most successful for the paddy crop. What about the nutrition? It does not require the nitrogenous fertilizer, but starting dose of nitrogen and phosphorus is desirable for the good luxurious biomass production that is 20 kg per hectare. Then what should be the pH? It will grow best one the, in the acidic soil that is between 5.2 to 5.8. Next we will see the what is the yield. Azala produced it to 10 tons of bio, green biomass and which is equivalent to the 25 to 30 kilogram of the nitrogen. It is further equivalent to 55 to 56 kilogram of the urea. Next one is how to apply the azola, how to use the azola in the field, particularly in the rice field. There are the number of methods, particularly the three methods. The method one is fresh azola biomass is applied in the rice field two to three weeks before transplanting the paddy crops. Then next method is the azola grown in the separate plot and can be applied to main field just before transplanting that is just applying the paddy crop in the field. Then the third method which is most commonly adapted in India that is azola can be inoculated after transplanting the rice and grown as a dual culture of rice and incorporated and in dual culture, the azola is grown in the rice field with the standing crop and when a thick mat is formed, water is drained out and azola incorporated in the soil surface. Again, in fresh inoculation is done at the rate of 0.5 ton per hectare. In this phase, azola is grown in 8 weeks, very shortly. It is again incorporated in soil. So it can repeat it for the three times contribution of the azola. The use of the green azola increases the soil nitrogen by 50 to 60 kilogram per hectare and that will reduce the nitrogen fertilizer of the rice crop. So this is the most important aspect in the use of the azola for the paddy crops. Then use of azola increases the rice yield by 30 to 35 percent much more. More than 30 quintal per hectare rice when grown with the azola in the dual cropping under the natural soil fertility. So this is also most important aspect for the uh, azola.
the thick azolla mat does not allow the weeds to grow in rice field this is the most important advantage now you can see here the when azolla is grown in the soil what are the result that is the non azolla soil sample and azolla soil sample you can see the, in the next slide you can see here the uh, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium content in the non azolla soil in the non azolla soil it is showing the nitrogen 340 while in the azolla soil it is 383 and in the regarding the phosphorus it is 22.02 kg in non azolla and it is 34.84 kg per hectare in the azolla soil and uh, regarding potassium 228.50 kg per hectare and in the azolla soil it is 250.30 kg per hectare that is much more increase in npk values for by using the azolla as a biofertilizer then how it contribute is further continue as the azolla reduces the evaporation of the water surface and ultimately increases the water use efficiency in the rice field dairy animal showed an overall increase milk yield by 15 to 20 percent when 2 to 3 kg azolla combined with the regular feed to the animal you can see here this is the commercial feed can be replaced with the same quantity of the dry azolla the azolla feeding also increases the quality of the milk earlier we have told the quantity of the milk now the azolla feeding also able to increase the quality of the milk and the health of the livestock uh, we have observed these findings that is in five days they have shown the 90 percent increase of the fat content of the milk and 6.5 percent increase in the rate of the milk due to the increase in the fat content they have increased the rate of the milk the here you have mentioned about uh, again other aspect particularly about the milk you can the see this the proof where there is the in the earlier case it is showing the uh, fat about 7.80 this is the middle one it is showing 8.97 percent and the last one showing 9.33 percent of the increase in the fat content from 25th to 23 30 april that is within the five days and ultimately increase the quality the other contribution include the environmental compatibility by growing the azolla green house effects on the environment is reduced particularly the greenhouse effects of the azolla is reduced that the enormous quantity of the carbon dioxide and nitrogen are absorbed by the azolla azolla also releases the oxygen making the environment more oxygenic and life supportive particularly the aquatic life supportive it is also providing the oxygen to the water body and increases the biological oxygen content of the water that is the biological oxygen content in the water is highly increased and water bodies are conductive for the aquatic organism where it become more suitable azolla also regulates the water ph near to neutral so the aquatic biodiversity can be thrive as a biofertilizer azolla reduces the use of the chemical fertilizer about 40 to 70 percent and thus save the environment Nowadays, we are uh, observing the increasing use of the chemical fertilizer and due to the use of the as well as a biofertilizer that will reduce the use of the chemical fertilizer and ultimately help to save the environment. As well also control the mosquito in water body. So this is also most important aspect for the human health. If controlling the mosquito ultimately help to control the arthropod borne diseases. As well can be called poor man's spirulina because spirulina cyanobacteria dried and prepared as a food or food additives being a rich source of many vitamins and minerals hence it can be compared with the azolla so hence it is mentioned as the poor man's spirulina so now you can see combinedly the new horizon of the azolla use the rice azolla that is the green manure rice azolla for the fish the rice azolla for the animal, rice azolla for the duck that can be used. But there are certain limitations, very few one. We can see one by one. The market for azolla is not so popular in India. 
then particularly there is the ignorance of the people about the benefits of the azola it become necessary to make them aware about the use of the azola as a biofertilizer so non availability of the technology to use the azola as a dry inoculum then water is prerequisite for its multiplication so it is not suitable for upland crops and high temperature and extreme low temperature is also not suitable for the growth of or for the cultivation of the azola but among them first two are the most important the market for azola is not so popular and secondly most important is the ignorance of the people about the benefits of the azola so there is need to have the education to the community regarding the use of the biofertilizer particularly in the paddy crops for the azola now i request you to subscribe the microbial content for learning the microbiology that is the our channel and you can scan and visit to the channel and thank you and you must use the azola as a biofertilizer and must uh, spread this knowledge among the community for the use of azola as a biofertilizer and this is our main aim to increase the use of the biofertilizer thank you